Hey, what's good, peeps? Wanted to check in with you, see how everyone was doing. Hope everyone is doing fairly well. Uh, I'll be quick. Um, missing you guys. Miss seeing you guys' faces. Um, celebrating what God is doing in your lives. I know right now school is uh, at a standstill and has been tabled. Uh, but do not give up. Hold your hope. Great things are coming. Um, I trust and believe that you guys have been doing your own uh, private family worship and family study through the scriptures, uh, praying with one another, uh, fellowshipping, talking to God, uh, seeing what God has to say, not just waiting uh, till we do our virtual worship on Sundays or Wednesdays, because I know that you guys love the Lord with all your heart. So you are spending time uh, in the word of God uh, for the last couple of weeks since we have been. Uh, confined to virtual worship with the 10 people, if you will. Um, we have been focusing more or less on adults. So um, for the next several weeks or until um, this pandemic has come to its expiration, um, I will come from time to time, maybe once or twice a week, just to encourage our children and our youth and uh, see what the Lord has to say. At the beginning of this year, we started, or I started, if you will, and challenged them to write down some hot topics uh, in regards to what's going on in their lives. Make them anonymous. And from week to week or from month to month, however long it takes us to kind of uh, crash course and discuss and solve these issues through the word of God, uh, we would do that. Um, and I understand in this particular setting, I can't go uh, or can't be as lengthy as I would like to on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday evening. Um, so I'm going to give you about six or seven minutes from a question, an anonymous question or anonymous hot topic that was asked by one of our teenagers. And that question is, what does God want from me? Um, I thought that was a very good question because uh, we know that God has done a lot of stuff for us. And in our context, whenever people do something for us, to the degree that God has done for us, um, we always think that God wants something in return. So I thought that was a good question and I'll attempt to answer that today. What, what does God want from me? What does God want me to do? That's a good question because the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible gives us the reality of what God uh, wants you and I to do and that is to love him. And that is with everything that we got. That's that's simply it. I mean, a total type of love, not that kind of love where it's like, yo, I love you as long as you can give me something or as Marvin Gaye said, uh, loving somebody as long as somebody loves you back. No, not that type of love or loving somebody when somebody uh, loves you back or when the the love is 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 there. If it's one sided, not that type of love either. Or if it's a benefit to you, not that type of love either. Uh, that's not the kind of love that God wants us to have. It's the kind of love that God unpacks in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, where he tells the nation of Israel, <clears throat> yo, I want you to love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your being. I want it all. I want you to love me with every ounce of energy that you have. So if God wants us to love him with all that we've got, the question is, man, how do we do that? And the answer is very simple. We obey his commands. The beautiful truths that we find in scripture that God pulls us up on game about is that he wants from us what he desires us to do, how he wants all of our being. Man, it's found in his word. We've got to go back to the scriptures to read the scriptures to see this is what God wants me to do. This is what he asks of me. This is the thing that he's telling me to do so that he can get the glory and so that he can work those things out for good in my life. Listen, I love my wife, my 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 sweet Tanisha Delight. I'm sure at some point she's going to see this. Right. We've been together for many, many years, been married nine years, just celebrated this month, even during the COVID-19. We have a, a beautiful family. We have a beautiful home. We have a beautiful daughter. We've built a beautiful life together. Man, it would crush my heart if I found out that my wife had opened up her heart to somebody else 
while we were still married. It would it would it would crush me. It would deflate me. You know, if some kind of way I found some emails or some text messages or some DMs from some other dude who she was trying to talk to, that would that would that would hurt me. It would break my heart. But thank God that's not the reality for me and my wife's relationship. That ain't something that I have to worry about. But my point is that you and I would be crushed if the person that we've totally loved didn't love us back. Right. Perhaps you felt like that, maybe from a parent, maybe from a friend, maybe from a neighbor, maybe from a family member. Perhaps you've been there where you've loved them and they haven't always been there for you. You've always been there for them, but they haven't always been there for you. And you feel like you don't get that love back. Now, take a step back and think, man, do I do God that way? Maybe you have, but here's the good thing about God. That not only did he give us the great commandment to love him with all we have, but he also gave us what I like to call the great commitment. And what's crazy about the great commitment is that there's a responsibility on our end, but there's also a reward. See, Jesus in Matthew 22, somebody said, look, Jesus, they were trying to trick him like they always were. They said, Jesus, look, man, what is the greatest commandment in all the scriptures? Guess what Jesus told them? Deuteronomy 6, 5. He told him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind and with all your soul. Everything you've got, love God with all of that. That's what he says. You got to love God with all of that. And then he challenged them and he said, and the second greatest commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. See, that's when it starts making sense. See, that great command to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, we do that by being obedient. So if we obey his commands, then Jesus says, OK, if you really love God with all you got, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, the golden rule, Matthew 7, 12, where it says treat others as you would want them to treat you. And if I'm going to really keep it 100 with you, I haven't always done that every day of my life. There's times when I've got mad at people for nothing. Sometimes I've gotten frustrated. Sometimes I shrug people off or even avoided them when something didn't go my way. I've gotten frustrated over and over again. But that's not cool because then I can get in my feelings when somebody treats me that way. Right. But then I think it's cool because I can justify with a response like I ah, see you don't know what they did to me. But that's not loving God with all we got. We love God with all we got when we love the people around us, when we think the best of them, when we forgive them quickly. Is it easy? No, you already know the answer to that. But that's where the great commitment has a reward. The reward is that God is committed to us. See, God tells us in Romans chapter eight that when we embrace Jesus as our savior, God, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and he gives us the power to say yes to loving them like we love ourselves. And when we love ourselves, when we make sure we look good, our hair is combed, our face is washed, our teeth is brushed. When we make sure that there are no blemishes on our faces, no boogers in our ears or boogers in our nose. And we make ourselves as presentable as we can be to our liking. We can fulfill both the great commandment and the great commitment because God, the Holy Spirit, lives inside of us and we who are believers in Jesus Christ. So he's committed to us so we can be committed to those who are around us, our neighbors, our friends, our families, our classmates, even to our enemies. So as you sit these next several days and talk with your parents, doing dinner, doing breakfast, doing lunch, whenever you do, think on these things. Think about the things you've done. Whether you've threw shade, whether you've offended somebody and maybe you should go to them and ask them for forgiveness for that. Ask them to let it go. Ask them to make amends, because now that you understand the great commandment and the great commitment, I pray that after viewing this and give it in some thought that you would be challenged to showing the love of God to those who are in your home, in your church, those who are in your community, in your in your, in your, in your, in your classes, in your schools, even those who may be your enemies. Because when you think about who it is you're obedient to and who you love and how they love you back, you know that you can be a billboard for the God that you're obedient to. I love y'all. Be blessed.